Hi, I'm Brad Hansen, a Cooperative Extension Weed Specialist at UC Davis. We've been talking about using selective herbicides to control weeds, but right now I want to talk about using selective application techniques and non-selective herbicides to safely control weeds in our landscapes. One of the primary tools we can use in the home landscape are shielded sprayers. I've got several examples in front of me, including the shielded single nozzle sprayer, a two nozzle shielded sprayer, another type of commercial shielded spray nozzle, We commonly use selective application to kill the weeds that we want to kill while sparing the vegetation that we want to save. One way to keep track of, of where we've sprayed and, and how good of a job we're doing with our application is to use a, a color marker dye. Another way that we can selectively apply herbicides is to protect the plants that we want to spare. For example, if I've got small enough plants, I could protect them with a cup or a paper bag and shield them, shield the individual plants from the herbicide application. If you use cups or bags to protect individual plants, you'll need to wait at least until the herbicide solution is dried on those cups before you remove them. And then those plants will have been spared uh, exposure to the herbicide. This is a tool. The handle is filled with a herbicide solution, usually Roundup, about 20% Roundup and 80% water. The herbicide soaks the sponge at the bottom, and you can use it to selectively treat tall weeds while not, while not treating the vegetation underneath. Shielded sprayers don't have to be high tech. For example, I've attached a drink bottle to this garden sprayer that I filled with a glyphosate a herbicide solution. I can use this to individually treat herbicides in my lawn or in my landscape. Another simple herbicide shield that we can use in the home garden is something as low tech as a piece of cardboard. For example, I could use this to edge around my, my landscaping. I'm going to shield my desirable grass while spraying a herbicide application on the edge of my landscape. In this section, we learned how you can apply non-selective herbicides yet still achieve selectivity. For example, glyphosate is a non-selective herbicide but can be applied selectively by applying it with a shield to protect desirable plants. Shields can be homemade or purchased. Even plastic bottles can be converted into a homemade shield. Colored dyes can often be used to tell you where you've treated an area. This prevents you from retreating an area again or missing an area. Smaller desirable plants can be protected from an herbicide treatment by putting a cup, paper bag, or a cardboard mask on top of them. If you decide to use herbicides in your home landscape, it's important to remember to take appropriate safety precautions to minimize exposure to yourself, your family, and your pets. Before making any herbicide applications, you should make sure that your site is ready for the application so that you can ensure that your weeds are at the right growth stage and that the soil is, that the plants are not too wet or too dry, and also that, you, that you're prepared in case a spill should happen. If you spill herbicide on soil, you can quickly scoop that up and put it into a trash bag and dispose of it in a landfill. If you happen to spill it on a hardscape surface like your driveway or a sidewalk, it's important to remember not to wash that down wash that herbicide away with water because you could just wash it into the storm drain. Instead, you should soak the herbicide up with soil or kitty litter or some other type of absorbent material and then dispose of that as solid waste. In the label, you can find information such as what the growth stage of the weeds should be, how long before rain or irrigation they should be applied, and how long before people, pets, or other animals can re-enter the area. Other environmental conditions can also have a great impact on herbicide efficacy. Most post-emergence herbicides work best on plants that are young and actively growing. Therefore, any conditions such as too cold, too hot, too dry, or too wet could result in less weed control with a given herbicide than you would have found under more ideal conditions. The herbicide label is also a source of information about how soon you can irrigate or allow pets or children to enter the treated area. 
Most herbicides used in the home landscape are actually fairly safe for people and animals because our, our biochemistry is entirely different than plants. We just don't have the same target sites that the plants have. Generally, the herbicide labels will recommend that you wait at least until the spray solution is dried on the foliage and until you let animals or, or children back in the area. Another important safety consideration when using herbicides in the home landscape is to minimize runoff of water. If you have sprinklers or irrigation systems set up and water is running off the landscape, they could, that water could potentially be carrying herbicides or fertilizers into the storm drains and directly into rivers or streams, needlessly polluting the environment. Once you've finished applying herbicides for the day and have cleaned up your spray equipment, it's important to decontaminate yourself to minimize any exposure to the herbicide residues that may be on your clothing. First, wash your gloved hands before you remove your gloves. That'll get rid of most of the herbicide residue on the exterior of your gloves. Then you can take off the gloves. If they're disposable gloves, you can pull them off inside out, having the herbicide residue uh, on the inside so you can throw it away without any potential further uh, exposure. Next, put on fresh clothing. When you launder any clothing that you've used during a herbicide application, you'll want to wash that separately from the rest of your family's laundry using hot water and plenty of detergent. Ideally, you'll also run a load of hot water and detergent through afterwards to further remove any herbicide residues from the washer or dryer. When considering the safety of herbicides, Dr. Hanston talked about a number of different considerations that you need to think about. First of all, labels provide the information on weather data and the most appropriate way to apply an herbicide and labels should always be read. Most herbicides do not affect humans or pets as their mechanism of action targets specific biosynthetic pathways that are only found in plants. It is important to recognize that overwatering areas that have been treated with herbicides can carry products into nearby streams and drains. When applying herbicides, it is important to wear gloves and carefully wash your clothes after application. So in this video, we've given you a number of different methods of controlling weeds, including mechanical, cultural, biological, and chemical. The specific type of technique that you would use in your own landscape, garden, or turf will depend upon your objectives and what you feel comfortable with. In many cases, you can even be creative and develop your own techniques that may be effective. So go forth, experiment, and kill your weeds.